I had a very successful bookstore in Berkeley, California. And when people ask, well, why did you close a bookstore? I would tell them it really wasn't my choice, but Amazon Acopolis, if you remember in the late 90s, a lot of independent bookstores closed when Amazon began to grow its business model. But when I came to some San Miguel, something inside me just opened up. I felt like this is my home. I could make this a very beautiful life. This is what I wanted for my future. I'm Patrice. John Stewart, when he would open his TV show, he would always say, this is my story and I'm sticking to it. So this is my story about how I came to this wonderful, incredible, beautiful town of San Miguel de Allende. I had a very successful bookstore in Berkeley, California. And when people ask, well, why did you close a bookstore? I would tell them it really wasn't my choice, but Amazon Acopolis, if you remember in the late 90s, a lot of independent bookstores closed when Amazon began to grow its business model. It was very hard to compete. I love my work, I love my bookstore. So when I closed it, I was somewhat sad, actually, you know, really sad. And I thought, hmm, I can stay in Berkeley or the US and feel sad about what I lost, or I could go to some place that would make me happier because I always wanted to live in a Latin American country. I had studied Spanish in high school and I loved the language. I loved the language. I loved the people. I loved the music. I loved the food. So I f thought, here's an opportunity. Rather than see it as a loss, I saw it as a gift, an opportunity to restructure, reinvent my life. So I came to Mexico. I traveled around to different cities, different states. But when I came to some San Miguel, something inside me just opened up. I felt like this is my home. I could make this a very beautiful life. This is what I wanted for my future. I was only 50 and I wasn't ready to retire. I didn't have the means. I wanted to have another life, but I also wanted to continue creating. And I love small business. I wanted to have a business, but I didn't know what I was going to do. It took me a while. I took some time, like say four years, and I traveled around the country and I really made San Miguel my home. I even bought a house and uh, created a home for myself here. And so one day I was in the home that I was renting before I actually moved to the home I bought. And this woman knocked on the door. She was a neighbor. I had had her make some curtains for me. And she said, I'm a seamstress and my children need to be in school and we don't have the means to send them to school. Can you help? So I started asking around. I asked a lot of people that had uh, connections into the nonprofit, but because they own their home, they weren't as poor as one needs to be to have, get scholarships. I said, Dolores, you and your daughters are really good seamstresses and I'm really good at marketing and creating a business. So let's work together and create a business model that would be using a fabric that I had been told about by a friend of the Virgin of Guadalupe. That was the beginning of a Brazos. And I only imagined it as like, you know, something that I would sell to lo local businesses in San Miguel, maybe to museums if I was lucky, it would take work, I was ready to do it. But over time, because of my passion for this work that I loved being involved in textiles and working with Mexican women, the business grew and grew and grew. And it was out of my home initially. And eventually I decided I really wanna have a store. Even though I had said when I closed my store, I will never, ever do a retail store again. Ever, of course, I did. So, so here I have a Brazos. And a Brazos means embrace. Now many people think, think that it means hugs. That is one interpretation of it, but my reason for calling the store Brazos is that to me it represented the embrace that the Mexican people have for the foreign community of San Miguel and the embrace, the heart, heart to heart embrace that the people who come here from other countries, not just Americans, but people that come into San Miguel and Mexico from other parts of the world embrace this culture. So it's a mutuality 
and I wanted the name of the store to express that. Plus, I love the letter A and Z, and the word had both. So it was both uh, kind of a spiritual or emotional name, but also a, a visual name. I love the way it looked. So that began a journey that started with the store. And over the years, it's grown exponentially, more than I could ever have imagined. And really when it exploded is through the Frida exhibitions. When, the, when Frida became uber popular, starting with San Francisco in 2010, I had contacts in the museum world and I built a whole network of museum directors and buyers. And I started selling directly to them because Frida Kahlo, of course, is one of the most popular icons and that was one of our specialties. There you have it. <laughs> That's one of our the patchwork Frida apron. And what's important about this apron is that it's made using fabric scraps. So Bra Abrazos makes aprons, pot holders, table napkins, oven mitts, uh, children's clothes, head, well, they're called kofias in Spanish. And so we use the scraps because we're a no waste company. Nothing goes to waste. For example, here we have little, what are called monederos, where people put little you know, coins in. We have, we have uh, luggage tags, etiquetas. Lori's going to get those for us. And these are, <laughs> gracias, Lori. So these are, haha, <laughs> Frida on top. These are very, very popular, I <laughs> know, because. Who doesn't want their luggage to be popping off the luggage carousel? And so we, every little scrap of fabric is used at a barazos. And so we're a no waste. What's left over after we make all of our products are rizazos, fabric scraps. And so in here are the scraps that artists and quilt makers and people come and buy. They stuff a bag and they are able to use these scraps to make jewelry, to make quilts, to make, <laughs> and the children use them for projects. And then whatever is left over from this, we bag and we give away to children's schools for art, art classes. So everything gets used. It's one of the things I love about our company. And um, I just love living in San Miguel. I really love every, everything about it. I tell people I even love the problems, imagine. But I just, I love the people, most of all, and I chose the town for its beauty, because when you arrive here, you're like, how can a place be so beautiful? All the buildings and the sunsets and the quality of light and the atmosphere, you know, it just radiates beauty. And I love the calmness of it, the kind of the sensuousness and the, and the slowness of it. Everything is just, in another kind of realm of existence and what we're used to. I was used to certainly from living in the Bay Area and living in California. So it works, it works. Everything kind of, the people are kind to each other. You rarely hear about um, public, well, you never see public shows of, you know, there, there's just not a tension in the air. It's like a softness, a sweetness that you feel. Everyone talks about that, it's noticeable. Um, and the Mexicans are very engaged with the foreigners. The foreigners are very engaged with the Mexicans. So we co-collaborate, we have friends and circle, you know, fiestas and such. I mean, sometimes people, you know, lean towards their own community and have their own groups. That's also always, po always true. Um, so I wanna tell you more about Abrazo. So it began with Dolores and her four daughters. They were our seamstresses for quite a while. And then as we grew, we had to grow the seamstresses. So we reached out. We had, you know, many women that we found. Not many. I mean, we've always been a small company. I always say we sound bigger than we are. So probably at our maximum before COVID, we were 13 seamstresses. And now we're down to about nine. But the women are uh, local women from the region, from, from the town. And... Um, they, we work in a fair trade environment. What that means is that the seamstress determine the price that they're paid for the, for the items based on um, how long it takes them. And then we no negotiate with them, but almost always they're really quite reasonable. 
And then they also get free loans if they have a need for money due to a family emergency or a, you know, a, uh, in one case, a woman bought her husband a car if they want to put an addition on their home. So the loans are given free of interest, and then they pay, they pay them out through work. I told you all about this beautiful business that I've created with Mexican families and seamstresses in San Miguel de Allende. And now I'm going to take you to my home. So you get a little glimpse into what uh, can be created using master craftspeople and with personal vision a home of your own, and that's in a colonia called Independencia. Let's go. So this is my home. I'm really excited to show it to you. This part is the symbol of Abrazos. It was on the front of the store, and I took it off the wall of the store, and I brought it here. I want to show you this bench which I absolutely love. I'm very, very proud of it. As far as I know, it's the only bench of its kind in San Miguel de Allende. And it was made with leftover tiles from my house, which is filled with tiles. So I wanted to introduce you to this concept of having a tile, be tile bench outside your home. Let's go inside the house. You'll see this theme throughout my home, the Virgin of Guadalupe. And this is a painting that was, or a photograph that was done by a friend that has so much meaning to me. It's really gorgeous. And as I mentioned earlier, Virgin of Guadalupe is one of the fabrics that I use to start abrazos. Come on in, come on in. It's a beautiful door with a hand, the welcoming symbol of the hand. And so here we are, this is my living room. You might say it has a few colors. <laughs> and what I like to say is, I dare you to be depressed in my home. I dare you. I think it's virtually impossible. Color makes us happy. Color is a happy element to a home. Yes. And in Mexico, you can have a house of many colors. You can have a house, you can create a home in any color that you like. You can have the outside painted any color, as long as it's not in Centro Storico. That actually is monitored by the rules of the centro. But you can see I have this awesome skylight and then folk art on the different levels of the, uh, they're called repisas in Spanish, lime green bookcases. Would you have those in your other life? <laughs> and <laughs> space for books and beautiful imagery. Okay. And let's go. Here we have the hallway. It's a little dark. I'm going to turn on the light for you. <laughs> Come on in. And here we have the kitchen, also filled with many colors. And the tile work that you see in the kitchen was done by a local artisan. And what's interesting about having tile work, I picked out the basic colors. But I said to Alfonso, you can make any image that is quintessential Mexico and reminds you of me. He made a mermaid. So that was a really beautiful experience. And um, so you can see I have just color. Oh, I wanna show you these. These are the chairs that are painted by my husband, Ernesto Perez, and he paints with toothpicks. So these are all created, handmade with toothpicks by Ernesto. And this is where we sit every night and have our dinners together. And then here is another creation of Alfonso. He is a master tile maker. And again, he made this beautiful table for me out of his own imagination. It's one of the things I absolutely love, love, love about our home. And the chairs again, Ernesto's designs. And here we are, this is my guy. Ernesto and I met in San Miguel de Allende. We met in 2010 when a friend said, oh, I met this wonderful guy and he's interested in meeting a woman just to go out for a conversation. Well, six days later, he proposed and we've been married <laughs> all these years. So it was really a great, great thing in my life to have Ernesto be my great love at 65. And this is the backyard, or you might call it the garden, cactus garden. 
And everything that you see, I co-create with landscapers and tile makers and painters. And they have, you know, the talent to do it all. Mexican workers, Mexican artisans are some of the greatest in the world. And the neighborhood that I live in is called Colonia Independencia. And what I'd like to say, I'd like to talk about the neighborhoods. We have a saying in San Miguel. What is the best colonia? Colonia is the world word for neighborhood. What is the best colonia to live in in San Miguel? And the answer, the one you live in. Because that's the one you know. That's why you chose it. You get to know your neighbors. It's so easy to meet your neighbors in Mexico and San Miguel and any, country, any city in Mexico, I assure you. Because people talk to each other. People say, buenos dias, buenas tardes. They are smiling as they walk by. And you get to know your neighbors very readily. And so we live in Colonia Independencia, which is up the hill from the main square. And you might be familiar with the parochia, which is our gorgeous Gothic church in the center of town. So if you think of that as 12 p.m., we are at 5 p.m., but up on a hill overlooking the city. And there are other colonias all the way around, neighborhoods all the way around San Miguel. Each one has its flavor and its advantages. What I appreciate most about Independencia is since it's up on a hill, we get a lot of breezes. And because it's separated from the center, which is Centro Historico, we have a lot of um, processions and it's often very quiet. When I first moved here, in fact, there were goats that ran around the neighborhood. We haven't seen those for a while, but I just love the quiet, the sound of the breezes. Once you get into certain neighborhoods, they can be a little more, mm, let's say, um, populated. And so the advantage to that, of course, is that you have cafes and restaurants and shops, you know, because of the density and the, the population. So each one has its benefits. Some are a little more expensive because they're so desirable. They're more desirable when they're closer to Centro Historico. But even if it's far from Centro, like Colonia Independencia, where we live, there's taxis, very accessible. They're mm. quite inexpensive. Buses go by in the neighborhood quite regularly. So you're never really isolated. You would never feel isolated if you were one of the outlying colonias. And there are more Mexicans in these colonias. It doesn't have the density of um, foreigners that live here. And uh, so everyone, some are a lot more expensive. The homes are higher in cost. I bought my home before I met Ernesto in 2004 for 105,000. Those prices you won't see again because San Miguel, as you know, has become a bit of an it city in Mexico. But nevertheless, it's important if you're thinking about it to come down and consider neighborhoods and, and get to know the city and even get a, buy a home as sooner because it will only get more expensive as time goes by. So I'm really glad I bought my home when I did. And I hope that when you come to San Miguel de Allende, that you come into my store Brazos, that you come and say hello, that you introduce yourself as someone from International Living. I have a gift for you. I have little gifts that I give for my friends from International Living. And also, if you want to learn more about Abrazos, how I started the company and all the gorgeous creations that we have made in San Miguel, we have a website, Abrazos, A-B-R-A-Z-O-S, sanmiguel.com. I hope you come to visit.